What's up, guys? This is Josh. I'm Connor. Chris behind the camera. And joining us tonight is special guest Jason Kowecki. Nice to meet you. A uh, regular at the cigar shop and a uh, friend of ours who comes by, but I don't know if he's been in a video maybe once before. Yeah, he was. Yeah, that's right. Uh, he's, last season he was in one. He's the best Pollock we know. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, as we mentioned in part two redux of the uh, OK Fire, tonight we're going to be doing the Drew Estate Kentucky Fire Cure. Now, this cigar was released in 2013 by Drew Estate, and it's kind of their take on a traditional Kentucky Fire Cure, which I'll have Connor explain in a little bit. I just got to go into some information about the blend of the cigar. Like most American Fire Cure tobaccos, this has a blend of American and Virginian tobaccos. However, joining it in the filler itself is actually Nicaraguan and Brazilian Matafina. As the uh, like wrapper the of it, or the wrapper is a uh, San Andreas wrapper, which kind of gives it that nice oiliness. Not really well displayed on this cigar, but you can see how it is definitely a darker rainy. That's a common uh, common characteristics of San Andreas wrappers. You know, you know what? I'm not going to go out on a limb here and say that I think that a lot of people, when you think about Mexican tobacco, they think about fake Cuban cigars. But um, there is some really good Mexican tobacco out right. there. Um, the first thing that comes to mind when I think of Mexican tobacco is actually the Rocky Patel uh, Prohibition Series, Mexico, which is a fantastic cigar if you can get your hands on it. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen them in years, though, so I don't know how much luck you're going to have with that. So, Connor, if you'd like to talk to them a little bit about the process of fire curing, um, so it's interesting. Um, it's a smoked cigar, and when I say smoked cigar, I don't mean, yeah, we had a wonderful time. We cut it, we smoked it, we <laughs> talked about life, but that they, is, that is going to happen. Yeah, that's going to happen. Gonna happen. <laughs> uh, it's a second smoking. Over a good cigar. cigar. Yeah. <laughs> second smoking of uh, the cigar, but, um, so they actually take the cigar, and just like you would brisket or, uh, a good roast or something like that, they put it in a smoker and they wood smoke it. Mm -hmm. And um, it's done at a lot lower temperature than you would for meat, so you're not drying out the tobacco, but it adds this really interesting barbecue flavor to the cigar. Really pungent, almost campfire -y smoke to it. Yeah, well, I remember the first time I, I encountered the cigar, somebody was smoking it, I'm like, Anybody order Bear's Barbecue? Ooh, that Bear's sounds good right now. local uh, barbecue restaurant. Awesome. Um, lot, lots of this is uh, collard <laughs> greens. <laughs> <laughs> and what you're drinking. Mm. Well, Speaking you know, of that, yeah. you want to crack me a beer there, broski? Uh, absolutely. So what we're drinking tonight is Connor's finish. That's the Benner Yeah, it's uh, a spray scotch. Lovely. Um, so <laughs> lovely, I can't stop drinking it. <laughs> yeah, evidently. We've also got some uh, black and tans and uh, some... Old Faithful, Sam Adams, Boston Lager. Now, Jason, have you had this cigar before? Uh, I did have it once. Drew Estate came to our local cigar shop that we hang out at, Connecticut Valley Tobacconist. Uh, obviously, a sales call. We had a Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. uh, Tuesday night, you know, everyone's always welcome. I'm sure you mentioned it here, Thursday and Fridays. So we had a Tuesday, which was a combination Thursday and Friday night because everybody showed up. Uh, sales rep was very professional, laid back guy. Um, and he gave out, uh, some were free, some you had to buy. He gave out package deals. Mm -hmm. um, Drew Estate also, by the way, is uh, nothing like these cigars. They have two versions. The regular cigars here, they're also the ones behind the Acid series. Um, not yeah. really my favorite cigar, but... <laughs> we know Cutter feels about that. You know how I feel about Acid cigars. <laughs> but they are Drew Estate, but the two different divisions. Yes. Um, uh, this cigar, this cigar, from what I remember, was a good cigar, maybe on the spicier side for me. But it's been a couple years, so we're going to have it again tonight and see what happens. Yep. Cool um, shit. And uh, Drew Estate does make a lot of different stuff. Of course, they make the Acid, which is a definitely a minus mark in their book for me. <laughs> but they make the Liga Provada, which are excellent series of cigars. Mm -hmm. They make stuff like the Kentucky Fire Cured. Um, I was going to mention it. Now I remember. Um, there are actually two versions of the Kentucky Fire Cured out right now. There's the regular, and they have something called Swamp Thing. Balls. Which is... <laughs> Those are what you get in the summer. Oh, um, bat wings. <laughs> so they have a Swamp Thing Kentucky Fire Cured, which is, um, the top is like the regular Kentucky Fire Cured, but the rest of it is wrapped in a Candela wrapper. I haven't had it yet, and I don't think I will because I don't like Candela. And it might be something interesting to see how the freshness of the Candela wrapper works. The price point on these, a pack of five of them cost you at 
about to put you back about $21, $22, depending on where you go. Cigars International, which is one of my preferred places, has them in stock right now for $21.99. So if you like what you hear, want to try it for yourself, go out and pick one up. It's actually not a bad deal. For Suggested cut for the smoke. Um, up to you. I know that Chris has a Vika on his. I've always done a straight cut on uh, these just because that's one of my favorites, all-time cuts. It's old faithful for me. Uh, what are you doing, kind of straight cut as well? I uh, just use your Calibri, yes. All right. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, we're going to smoke these real quick. Well, probably not real quick. We'll see uh, how long it takes. Time we got. probably about... Can't see my demo watch. 1022. Is, yep, 1022. I'm thinking probably about an hour or so. So uh, we're going to smoke these bad boys, finish up a few more beers, let you, know, let you guys know what we think. And um, while we're gone, can you guys find some scotch for me? I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> talking about? He rigs it up with the, what is it, like the cabinet drawer or yeah. something like that. Those are surprisingly easy to make, by the way. There's really not much to it if you think about it. Springs, a cabinet drawer, you just have to have catch them there. Right. Right I know we are. What's up, guys? This is Josh, Connor, because he was busy. Uh, Chris recording and uh, Jason. Jay's still standing. Yeah, Absolutely. we well still sitting. <laughs> sitting. <laughs> we uh we finished up with the uh, cigars. So, what'd you guys think? So, I say this all the time that um there are a lot of cigars out there that are very similar to other cigars. It's, oh, if you like this, you might want to try this. Um, the Kentucky Fire Cure is one of those cigars that it's so out there that it's not really quite like anything good had. out there i actually some guy somebody came into the shop last year looking for a christmas present for their father and they were like i can't spend a whole lot on cigars i can maybe get two or three like what's something that he's probably never had before but is different than anything he's had and i'm like kentucky fire curtains they're out there man um the special edition yingling <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I love them. When you light them up, you get the room note of barbecue. Mm -hmm. um, you taste the barbecue right off the bat. Um, I, I'd say that will actually last a surprising amount of time. Do the yeah. whole cigar for me, for sure. Um, for me, it went from the light all the way to the last third of the cigar where it mellows out and you get a bit more of the generic Maduro flavor. That's not a knock against the cigar. It's well constructed it's got good maduro tobacco in there aside from the regular uh you know infusion that's yeah on. not uh, a typical acid i hesitate to call it an infusion but it's not really but it, you know that flavor is the there. uh the flavor that the curing process imparts upon the tobacco and as you know with the regular acid the infusion wears off halfway through and then it's a ch shitty cigar <laughs> Not the case with this thing. It's still a good cigar underneath the amount of added flavoring of the curing process. I don't really have too much to add. For me, it, it, it wasn't the most complex cigar, and I've had these plenty of times, and I've had different opinions about it. That doesn't mean it was a, it was a bad cigar, though. Obviously, like Connor said, you got a really smoky, barbecue-y note. Actually, for the most of it, and including there's still a little bit of room note about it now, uh, definitely a very spicy cigar, which I'm all for. I like that. Very leathery, very woody. Absolutely no hints of any sweetness of any type, which was uh, perfect for me. So this cigar is its one of my favorite Drew Estate cigars, to be honest with you. What do you think, Jason? Two words. <clears throat> cigar chaser. Uh, <laughs> two gentlemen. Uh, basically filled it 99% of it. Uh, good cigar overall, good taste, nicotine, nothing too strong for mm -hmm. my my palate, but again, the spiciness, the sun-grown, the sun-dried, anything sun-related uh, definitely gets a spicy taste in my mouth. I got no problem with that. I have those, have those now and then, but uh, let's just say this isn't the first beer I've had tonight. <laughs> um, I would definitely first uh, 15 recommend or so. Uh, no, nothing. <laughs> uh, I would definitely recommend it. If you want to try it, it's not going to kill you. Um, and, you know, some people obviously like that. Uh, again, Drew Estate, again, I'm not an ass fan like, like uh, Connor. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you can't emphasize that enough. <laughs> uh, but, but, again, uh, de de decent, mild to medium, again, intensity. But uh, definitely, you know, just make sure if you like the spice, that's good. But yeah. uh, 
Mr. Samuel Adams and I have been good friends tonight. Make sure you stay hydrated. It yeah. is a good middle line cigar if you're not really wanting to jump down the rabbit hole of full body cigars. But it, I would put this. It'd be over not, the middle. Not as body, but as far as intensity of the experience, it certainly is near what you would experience the full body cigar. It's a full mild. It is. Um, and when we talk about fullness of a cigar as far as strength, uh, there's two distinct categories you have to talk to about strength. So, two extremes here. We're talking about the Kentucky Fire Cured, which is a very dark bodied cigar. It's stronger, but it doesn't have a lot of nicotine in it. No. You don't get a buzz off it. No, right. you don't. Or lightheaded. You can go on the complete opposite of the spectrum, and um, Josh uh, gifted me a little while ago a uh, Dunhill Age cigar, mm -hmm. which is a Connecticut wrapper. It's mostly mild tobacco, but the amount of nicotine coming off that thing will make your head spin. <laughs> <laughs> so... That's two things to consider when um, expanding your own horizons with cigars. If you're a real dedicated medium person or a real mild person, there are mild cigars that will uh, slap you in the face and tell you who's daddy. <laughs> Not your mama. Um, we got about hour, hour and fifteen. Yeah, say proudly you're on there. Do you have anything, Dad, Chris, about the cigar? Um, the room note, and we were talking about it earlier, was uh, I got that English blend, like the pipe tobacco mm -hmm. you smoke. So there was a neat lemony kind of old school scent that i kept yeah. picking up and i also tasted it um it was first quarter and very strong in the second the second quarter the last quarter of the last um, third of the second thank you but i mean i thoroughly enjoyed it you heard me okay. i was raving about it through the whole thing that i just couldn't believe the different flavors and tastes that i got so i mean i put it up there. i'd give that like a good eight eight and a half yeah i'd probably say about the same thing eight eight and a half you know what, I'd go to eight and a half, and um, especially if you hadn't had it in a while, almost a nine, because yeah. I think this is the first time I've had the Kentucky Fire Cured in over a year, and it just surprises me for the price of that cigar, how interesting it is. I thought it paired well with what we were drinking tonight, too. I thought they oh, were yeah, a certainly. great mix. Not a chaser. <laughs> yeah, if, you, if you're going with beer, definitely a medium body ale. Um, maybe even on the darker side too, but you don't want to overpower the smokiness in the cigar. If you're having liquor with it, I def definitely recommend a spray, which is what the scotch was. I would say is, but it's a was now. If you're not a scotch guy, I would also recommend any good, you know, Kentucky straight bourbon, bourbon would yeah. go with it too. Um, the uh, spiciness in the wood. Certainly pair well with the spiciness of the cigar. Not not a weedy bourbon like no. Baker's Mark though, but um, something a little bit stronger like maybe Jefferson's yep. or mm -hmm. uh, Waterford would go great with this. If that's a little bit too much for your uh, piggy bank or wallet, um, <laughs> Rebels Yellow would pair well with. Yeah, it would. Absolutely. Well, unless you drink like you and you do a whole bottle in a sitting. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't judge you about what you do. You need to sir. I can handle it. <laughs> I ain't touching it. So, any final thoughts before we uh, close up for the night? Anything we think about doing in the future? Um, nothing comes to mind right now other than some of the stuff that we teased in the uh, teaser video. Some of the stuff I hope to get to this season. Some of it we'll see. <laughs> um, it occurs to me that we actually never did the short story. We talked about it. True. We did that video and actually, then we never got around to it. Yeah, maybe I'll... Uh, those short stories, uh, they are non-existent in my humidor anymore. Oh, um, oh. I, get, I, I don't I, judge you for that. That's there, understandable. There is more of them. I'll pick <laughs> some up, and uh, maybe actually next video we will do the short stories because we did promise you guys that. Uh, otherwise, if you guys don't have anything else to say, this is Josh. I'm Connor. Special guest Jason and Chris behind the camera. Have a happy new year. Stay safe on National Hangover Day. <laughs> See you next time. Don't drink too much. Drink way too much. <laughs> <laughs>